like the Nostradamus. Uh, like <laughs> Don't forget the flag! <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Franklin! It's gonna be a fun! Welcome back to another horror convention walkthrough video. This time we are at Cult Classic in beautiful Bastrop, Texas. One of the best parts of attending Cult Classic is sort of that they have a few built-in horror filming locations that you can enjoy while attending. But before I get to Bastrop, I always make it a point to stop off at three to four of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2003 filming locations that are pretty much along the way. So in Granger, I stopped by the Family House. Uh, then I went by Taylor to see the Slaughterhouse, which is the Taylor Meat Company, which had a sign that said permanently closed. I'm not sure if that's forever. And then a swing through Manor for uh, the Sealy Store. Fun fact, the Sealy Store was also featured in the non-horror movie Secondhand Lions. Um, but once you get to Bastrop, uh, fans of 2009, Friday the 13th, um, Camp Crystal Lake is right there. It's the Lost Pine Scout Reservation. So I don't know if it's still an active camp, if you're able to gain access easily or not, but there's definitely some recognizable locations that remain there. I have not visited that section myself, but there are YouTube videos that you can check out. One of the much more accessible locations is where Clay gets pulled over at the railroad crossing. So this is literally out the back door of Cult Classic Convention. There's a, a area with a gazebo where the live music will play, and then there's also additional vendors that you can find outside. So just beyond that um, is the location where, like I said, Clay gets pulled over. So definitely check that out when you're attending Cult Classic and get your photo op. Um, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, the opening bridge where the yuppies play Little Chicken with the Farmer. Hey, check it out, dude. Let's play Little Chicken with the Farmer here. <laughs> 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 Fuck. is there and it's really funny to see the three sections of the bridge and then go back and watch the movie and the bridge looks like it's six miles long because the the car battle takes place so long it's pretty genius editing and uh it's definitely fun to look at the bridge and then go back and watch the scene and see just how far they made that bridge look. Toby Hooper made it look like it was over a mile long. So great stunt work by all the actors and a very memorable part of the movie. So yeah, visit Bastrop. And the holy grail of filming locations has to be the gas station from 1974's Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Not only can you visit the gas station, buy merchandise, um, but even at the convention it's catered by the gas station. So you can sample some of their amazing barbecue and know it's not made of people. So a couple of highlights for me were the cosplayers. There were some pretty amazing costumes this year. Uh, being in Bastrop, you can always count on their having at least a few iterations of Leatherface, but this year uh, the old woman Leatherface made an appearance. Very cool because this is probably the least cosplayed version, uh, but the guy wearing this costume did a great job, even walked around and window shopping in character for a majority of the show and interacting with some of the patrons. It was, it was pretty funny, especially the goat lady. So there was a Linda from Evil Dead. Uh, she actually ended up winning the costume contest, which well deserved, and you can see why. Those contacts alone were a commitment. Uh, she could barely see anything. But uh, she was also invited up on stage to do The Laugh with um, Betsy Baker, uh, the original Linda from Evil Dead. So that was super cool. Um, who else? Pretty Woman, Leatherface, Art the Clown, Toxic Avenger, just to name a few, and it's not a Texas cosplay event unless Vic and Spooky Thing make an appearance, so I had to stop down and capture their look for the show. Cheers. There was also a Lady Ash Williams that looked fantastic. Another highlight of the show was Paul's Real Wheels, so go give Paul a follow on Instagram. He had a screen accurate yellow Delta, the classic, if you will, from Evil Dead. I had seen this car from across the room at I think it was 2019 Frightmare when he had started working on it, but I never got a chance to go by and see it up close. Paul is friendly and approachable and a great wealth of knowledge of automobiles and especially screen accurate replicas. Please follow him on Instagram at Paul's Real Wheels. He told me a few other projects he has going on and I can't wait to see those cars when they get ready. So um, it was great listening to his story and I will try and include a portion of that conversation later in this video. 
Then as far as guests, I had to meet Teresa Tilly, who played Shelley, as well as Betsy Baker, who played Linda in 1981's The Evil Dead. They were so much fun to talk with. They told me about their Facebook group, The Ladies of Evil Dead, so please go follow that Facebook page to find out where they'll be appearing next and catch them uh, at a future convention. Um, but having them sign my Necronomicon was definitely the high point of the weekend for me. Cult Classic always kicks off convention season for me, so i um, pretty excited for some of the other shows coming up soon. I think the next show for me will be Days of the Dead Las Vegas, so I cannot wait. My first out-of-state horror convention. Please subscribe so you can be notified when I post that video. I hope to see many of you later this year at Texas Frightmare as well as Houston Horror Film Festival in August. So without further ado, let's check out the walkthrough of Cult Classic Convention 2024. Let's go!
Good morning. It is day two at Colt Classic Convention in Bastrop. And no trip to Bastrop is complete without a stop by the gas station from Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Been here a hundred times, but I can't get enough of it. Um, yeah, that's it. Let's just walk around real quick. Famous We Slaughter Barbecue sign, the green door. And the memorial bench. Check out the replica van. This is the same model van used in the movie. However, it does not have Franklin's famous sliding door. Other than that, it's really cool that they took the time to get a van that looks so close to the original and park it out here, keep the tires flat so nobody gets any ideas. And then they have cabins out back you can stay in. So this is an active Airbnb. Don't want to disturb these people. But pretty creepy cool that you can stay out here. A lot of times they'll have guest signings, live bands, movies shown on this stage out there in the far background. Dining area. And people are already, or someone is already out here smoking barbecue, so that's kind of cool. These are the woods that Gunnar Hansen would have chased Marilyn Burns through when she's looking for help. She sees the unsuspecting business, runs into the cook, and you know what happens next. This is a must stop if you're within, I would say, three hours of Bastrop in Austin. You've got to come out here. It is a beautiful Saturday here at Colt Classic Convention. This is Paul with Paul's Real Wheels.
him in 2K Primer yeah. and had a buddy of mine spray it in a body shop. Nice. And then I uh, So the only thing is really not that I'm getting it together, man. Yeah, so, yeah. Look at this. Yeah. Did you play it? No. Okay, so yeah. Sure. With working hey, with magnetic you? shells, hey, like, this whole thing is just being printed. Are you serious? It weighs like a pound. <laughs> 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 Isn't that insane? Dude, you can 3D print okay. the hell out of anything. <laughs> Dude, the boom stick, man. Yeah. That's gnarly. How about the how about the pixel? So that was so I made the one in the display cabinet. I had another buddy who builds these for like a living. Not a living, but he builds them as a hobby. And yeah. So so uh, Brett screwed in chainsaws. He's on YouTube and he's well. Um, but that's an Ash versus the Dead looking saw. Yeah. Yeah. He, he like as accurate as he can build them. Is, how we build them, but yeah. yeah, they all uh, you know, have a little pull cord. And, oh, that's sick. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's badass. <laughs> that's sick. Where'd you get the uh, lipstick at? Uh, uh, there's somebody on Etsy. Like, everybody on Etsy just like go around and stuff. I so. need to find me a, uh, a nice sword. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 I would reach out to somebody. A lot of people tend to tell. Nice. So, Cool. Yeah, I, built, I had a guy who wanted to laser scan my dead idea that I made. Like he wanted to three, like 3D print it. And I had already built it and attached the antlers and yeah. I was like, nah, I don't want to take it apart. <laughs> like yeah, it's already yeah. it's already this far along, so <laughs> that makes sense. Thanks, yeah. It was a taxidermy form and then I basically just cut the jaw off, dropped it down. But the eyes, the jaw set that's inside it, the molars and stuff, yeah. that's all taxidermy stuff. Um, and the tongue was taxidermy, and then the ears were like, what you use for taxidermy. Yeah, yeah. And then I just used like, I don't know if I'm in a Hobby Lobby, it was like some cool, you know, like bone hairs. Yeah, so, yeah. I want to like dirty it up a little bit, like maybe throw some hair brush in it. I yeah. literally finished it the day before coming out here. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Everybody did the stuff in the last the, the whole backdrop was built the night before I rolled out here. Oh. I went and just got a pallet at Ace Hardware and just screwed a bunch of planks to it. It was a free, I built the backdrop for free. <laughs> just screwed a bunch of crap to it. I bought the equipment. Yeah, the only other show I brought this up to was in 2019 at Texas Frontier. Uh, they did an Evil Dead, I say reunion, but it was Sam Raimi, Ted Raimi, and Bruce Campbell. Yeah. And so I got all three of them to sign the front of the car when it was up there. And then I just had uh, Teresa and uh, Betsy sign the last one. And I got like five cast members from the first movie. That's cool, man. So epic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I took the trunk off and carried it in there. Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I did the same. Uh, Ted came to the after party Friday night, and he was just walking around. I was like, Ted, we signed a trade He was like, 40 bucks. Here you go. So yeah. he signed it while it was on the car. And then Sunday, they were doing autographs, and I was like, I've just got to take it to them. Like, they're so busy. They don't have time to, like, come down here. I can't tell Bruce Campbell, like, or Sam Raimi, like, can you see my car? So I carried it through crowds of people, <laughs> and I just slapped it down on Bruce's table. He's like, oh, yeah. Car in the other room, I was like, Yeah, he's like, oh, damn it, he's trying it. <laughs> and then I saw Sam was right there, and somebody yeah. walked away, and I was like, I'm not getting back on. He might get over to his. Yeah, yeah. Autograph. yeah. Autograph. And so he signed it, and then he actually came down Sunday before he was building to check it out. Like, he, Sam, I, he's like, Hi, I'm Sam. And I was like, Holy shit. I was like, Hey, what's so, up? He's like, Hey, it's a beautiful car. He's like, Yeah, uh, I have to use this in an extra sometime or something. Yeah. I was like, What? Like I was just like starving. Oh, man, that's bad. I was like, can I just take a selfie or a picture real quick? He's like, sure. Put down his bag and take one photo of him next to my car. Nice. I was like, oh, okay. That's epic. But I haven't brought it out since, and so I just like, keep it out of the house. And I got
Something's out there. Something that forced its way into our world. Listen up. Come get some. Come on, get some. All right. Come get some. Come get some. Shout out to Sam Raimi. Come get some. Bruce Campbell. Haha. Come get some. Come.
grab our dawn, swallow your soul. Similar to if I kick you with teeth, swallow a soul, you a dub. Yeah, but you playing, y'all can swallow a soul. Or get slug with these two cans. If you follow my nose, I'm gold. Take a shot from the grassy knoll. I can school you with the Draco. This ain't the grassy no. Under siege, feel like Waco. Y'all should already know. Got this red dot mark on you, marks like ready go. You boss around, get around like a merry go. Catch a big fish, I'm not Moby Dick, but there she goes. See that boom stick? Get your boom boom click, my flow. Make the room sick, then put the six 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 below. Y'all like who this? Masking a MF for like Loomis. I do this so deadly with mics like Dr. Loomis. Uh, this is Necronomicon music. What else would you expect from the Necronomicon? Stupid. I see dead people. Ivory smoke in my face, I raise the eagle and leave you, I guess he dead people These rappers ain't it, just roaches in my ass shirt Ha, ha, ha. 
I also went back in the spring, and one of the reasons why both Chris and I went back is they literally would run out of money. And so Sam Ramey would have to go and call his parents who were family members and say, Hey, Mom, Dad, we need a little bit more cash for some more film, literally. And back then we did it on film, and they would have to wait, get some money, and put it in the bank, and then buy some more film and send it down to Tennessee. So it not only was because we lost the footage, it's that we didn't even have any footage because it was such a low budget. Have you seen the cosplayers walking around as you two today? I know who won the contest. That's for darn sure. <laughs> right, there's you. Woo -hoo! Woo -hoo! Look at this. It's dead on if you ask me. It's dead on. <laughs> Great job. Uh, and then for Silence of the Lambs, how long was that shoot? Oh my God. Uh, I think similar. Uh, it was a couple months, and I went for a couple weeks, and then I went back. I remember I had to go back. So, um, yeah. But I think we had all the money. <laughs> Different budget. So many of your scenes were in the, the well, so to speak. Were, on set, was it just you most of the time, or were, were there other actors there? It was just me and Ted, pretty much. Yeah, and Darla, the dog. Aww. Yeah. There's a dog I really want to adopt here, I think everyone here should take a dog home, don't you? Yeah. Just saying Sage is adorable. Get Sage, get Sage. <laughs> no? Is he going to get it? Are you going to get Sage? Sorry. Charlotte. Charlotte. Get, get Charlotte. Charlotte. Remember, you can buy raffle tickets right now. That will benefit the Fast Drop Animal Shelter. Um, that's great. Uh, that's a follow-up question for you. Or, actually, not a question. I just wanted to say. Have you guys heard of the podcast, My Favorite Murder? No. It's a true crime podcast, and it's very, very popular. Their tagline is, Stay Sexy, Don't Get Murdered. And they tell a story. Well, that ship has sailed. <laughs> But, but it, a lot of it came from your role because they talk about how women are too polite and will help people, help the, help the man that's hurt or help the little old man or, you know, they get approached to help. Can you help me, you know, get gas? Can you, can you help me with my groceries in the trunk? Can you do this? And women tend to be too polite and we go ahead despite our inner voicing, you know, don't do that. So they say, stay sexy, don't get murdered, basically get the F out of there. But her role in uh, Silence of the Lambs, that's what happens if she's too polite. You're too polite, you get snatched up. Stay at SSDGM, just remember that, ladies. Sir, I think you're going to be okay, because you look like you can handle yourself. You just, you know, you just stay sexy. <laughs> Do you have any questions? Go ahead. Yeah. I actually have a request. A request. If we could get a picture of the two Lindas together, Linda and the and the contest winner, Lin could, could we get them to stand next to each other? Would you like to the contest yes. winner from the Evil Dead? Would you, would you like to come up here for a quick photo? We get someone escort her, please, because she's wearing yeah, a she can't see. You go on that side. Yeah. <laughs> Let's give Kara a big hand. Yeah. That's great. I love that. How about some dueling laughs? Dueling evil laughs. Yeah. Dueling laughs. Dueling laughs. Yeah. Well, I don't really do the laughing anymore. Kara, why don't you try? shooting with shovel 
in the cabin and some brooms and shoveling out the you-know-what and sweeping out the, uh, the cabin. And there was no electricity or there were rooms. They, a lot of the rooms in the movie, they were just fake. So that may be what you mean. They put up like a piece of paper. The one about the Oh, the, the cellar was not even, they just had a door, a, a cellar door. But the, they had an actual cellar in Michigan at uh, Tom Sullivan's house. So he never went down. During the shoot of the movie, Alan just did a split backwards uh, into the open door, but it was really just such a strong, cross space. Yeah, it was, it was, and she had lots of contacts in it, too, which made it very exciting. Yes, sir. I don't know if she was a property owner or someone near there, but there was a person who used to frequent the set. I don't know anything more than that. Bruce right. would know more, and if he didn't, he'll make it up. But right. um, there, we were out in the backwoods of Tennessee, so there were a lot of you know questionable characters wandering around. You know, I don't know with and know. without moonshine. Yeah, there, there was a lot of moonshine. <laughs> very dangerous to train this. Brooke, did you go to the premiere for the Seven Dwarfs? I did. Um, I can't believe I'm going to out myself, but I wore this dress. Lovely <laughs> dress. I just found this dress, and my daughter's like, it's kind of cool. That's very cool. Is, am I right? Is would, would Silence of the Lambs, it's considered horror, did, and would it, is it the first Oscar winning horror movie? I think it's the first. I believe it might be. I think, I think it might be first, and you know, and it didn't. It took decades for the next one, which I believe was The Shape of Water. I think. I don't know if there's been another one since. I might be wrong, but those are the two I can think of, which is pretty interesting. It's been some excellent hereditary, for instance. I think could have been a best picture film, but uh, it's very hard to touch silence. So you ask me. All right, ladies and gentlemen, since it was such a sh uh, small crew on your on the Evil Dead, okay. did you have to do other roles other than acting when you weren't acting? Well, we we did pretty much everything. You know, in theater, you know, you just uh, oh, there's how John in the cabin. We need to shoot there. Let's go take it out. Know, we we all participated. I mean, most of us participated in a lot of different activities in order to keep the film going. In a case like that, do you, are you credited for everything you do, or are you just as the role of the, of the credit as the actress? Uh, we're, we're just credited as the actress. I don't mean that just, yeah, I mean, you know, it, 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 just we're left off of everything that you should have. Well, you know, they didn't call us but there was no one else there, so, and, you know, I was a Girl Scout, so I did you got the job done. I to do. It was sort of like Judy Garland and Mickey Rooney, you know, sitting around saying, hey, let's do a play. And every, we all did everything. And on the nights, in all, we shot mostly nights, and on the nights that maybe Teresa was shooting, um, Ellen and I, Ellen Sandweiss, who played and Cheryl, we could have stayed back at the house where we were all staying and, you know, maybe turn on TV or whatever. But that never happened because on the nights that other, that one of us or two of us were acting and one was off, we all went as an ensemble and helped each other out. We kept each other warm. We would go and get... Um, we protected each other. protected each from other. The, from the director. And we would put blankets around each other. Um, we did a lot of outdoor shooting, you know, in the, in the ground at night. And there were and if I was in the ground one night, then Teresa and Ellen were there with warm blankets. And, are you okay, B? Are you all right, Betsy? Everything okay? Can we get you anything? Like, they couldn't, but whatever. They tried. <laughs> and, but we were truly supportive Another of each other. Another example of us doing the shot that was so uh, famous uh, in the, 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 the tree and Ellen, <laughs> Linda, or uh, Cheryl, Betsy and I that night, we were pulling the vines down Ellen's legs as she was running through the woods. And then there was a moment where the, 
they, they had her legs kind of going apart, were pulling the vines down. We both did that. In the in post, the, the vines were reversed, which is, we had no idea this was like a We had no idea. And then when we saw it with our very religious parents, <laughs> I'm going, Mom, look over the hip. <laughs> Oh my God. Yeah. Then they have done that post. Well, my mom thinks I'm satanic. Clever, but I said my mom thinks I'm satanic just be for the look. But you know, I can't imagine if I showed her a Evil Dead rape scene with the you helped on that you didn't know about. <laughs> that very interesting. That were they real vines? Or did, oh yeah. Really? Yeah. Did, did it? Yeah, she got brought up a little. What's a little piece of it? A little A lot of questions. Yeah, very Yeah, question. You can get your attention. Good job. So, is it true, and if so, you want to talk about it? Like the night everybody indulged in too much herbal medicine and you couldn't shoot? The night around the fireplace? I can only speak for myself. Okay. I'll tell you what happened, then we'll go down the road here. I did hold it. I didn't inhale. <laughs> <laughs> I did hold it, but I did not inhale. Seriously. Because I knew at some point, hopefully, that I would maybe have children. I would say, oh yeah, that was me up there. But um, it was just the fine quality of acting throughout the evening that um, made it a believable scene. But I will say that other people that were in that circle indeed did. I, I don't really know. I was so involved in my acting that I, I wasn't looking at what other people were doing. So all I can say is that I, like that team, had a fabulous method acting moment. But I don't know what anyone else was doing. <laughs> We will never, the world may never know. You're going to have to go to every Evil Dead panel and ask <laughs> Ask Bruce. Ask just ask Bruce. That seems like a hint. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes, back here. Um, what's the name of the place that you guys had to burn to stay warm? We didn't have heat in the cabin. I mean, it was a real cabin. So I don't know if you knew back in the 70s or the 60s or the 50s or whatever, they had these huge big gas. Uh, oil heaters that they used to put on football fields. Yeah. And you'll notice that football players were told or never really stood near them because of the fumes. Uh, we all stood in front of it to stay warm. Yeah. And they, heat, they used one of those to heat the cabin. And they had the little coils that you used to be able to buy and heat to, but they smoked so much. They didn't worry about the fact that they were carcinogenic. They just smoked too much, so they didn't use them very often. But yes, it's true. Brooke, what makes you want to get into acting? Well, my mom was in the business. She was a publicist, which was very different back then. Um, and she was always up with actors, so I'm sure that's why I became one. Uh, but I always knew I was going to. I have kids now, and I remember being a teenager and people saying, it's so good, you know what you want to do, you know? And now I get it, because I'm a mom. <laughs> you know? It is good to know what you want to do. I just thought everybody did. You know what I mean? Yeah. You want to make sure. Questions? Yes. Well, I was just telling somebody that I, actually the prop mistress, Annie Miller, dropped off the bottle of lotion at my apartment like a year after the movie came out. And, and I gave it away. No. And I'm going to say who I gave it away to because I was just talking about this. I went to Marilyn Manson's birthday party. Oh. And I knew how much he loved it. And I just thought, it's on the shelf. Like, what do you give Marilyn Manson? I don't know. So I gave it to him. So now we kind of want to break into his house and steal it back. Because it just feels like that was, I should have thought that one through. Around, around when was this? This was like seven years ago. This wow. Was wow. Years ago. So, and I know he still has it. And it's 
Sorry, you guys are all welcome to go. Was there lotion still in it? No, no, no. It was dry. Yeah. I think that's all I took. I have nothing. They, they, they burned everything. They were green shoes, and they would, like, they had added a, a scene of me being pulled out of fire. And they used Rob Tappert's sister, so they got my costume and jam. I don't have anything from Evil Dead. Not a stitch, not that bad. A pair of shoes from a show I did a few years ago called Baskets, which I've not worn since, but I went home with a pair of shoes. Baskets with Zach Galvanopoulos? That Baskets with uh, Zach Galvanopoulos? Yes. Oh, what a great show. Uh, what? Oh, you have to go back. But you know what else? I also have a neck. It was mine, but Ted borrowed it, and he wears it. Uh, one thumb down in there. It's like a Zunian Indian necklace. So you were wearing it to set, they decided to say, yeah, keep your necklace. Me too. Let me yeah. put this in. So you just give away a lot of things, right? I'm <laughs> giving person. Yeah, that one. <laughs> Question. Yes. Underwater, it's underwater. Yes. Have you seen Evil Dead Rock? And if so, what did you think? Do you keep up with the franchise? Yeah, have you seen the latest? Well, we were invited to the one of the premieres in LA of the Rising, mm -hmm. and it was really fun. We met Melissa and um, I get the other lady's name and play the zero. And um, it was it was fun, and I thought the movie was interesting. I mean, it didn't have the same scare thing for me, and I felt like the the, um, the acting was phenomenal. Everybody was great. But I, it was in LA. And I just couldn't believe it. It was a lot of rain. And it was dark. And it just felt like, oh, it's not that dark here. I don't know. Something about it. Then. But I thought everybody was really good. I, I didn't get scared, though. Like, I still get scared when I watch our movie, which I know everything is But I still get scared. I didn't get scared. Tell them about your uh, experience. Well, I sat next to Teresa at the premiere and I saw nothing of the movie. I actually do not like scary movies. And I, <laughs> I pretended I literally had a bad headache and I was like this the whole night. I cannot watch a TV commercial with a car driving fast. So, yeah, what if it like goes over the cliff and they just didn't you know, catch it or whatever in post? I, I just don't like to watch scary movies. So, and to me, what I heard was scary, so I'm sure it was brilliant. <laughs> I think the largest difference between the original and then the latest is practical effects versus uh, video effects and CGI and whatnot. And I know a lot of people in the horror community really love their practical effects. And for me, I think anybody that was born 80s and before, uh, practical effects are just have the best place in our hearts. And it makes it scarier. It just it looks more real most of the time. I mean, there's sometimes where it's like some kind of puppet work, and you know, you know what it is. But otherwise, like if you can pull the camera with a practical effect, pull the camera with a practical effect. That's awesome. so a really good point, and I think I, I think all of us are nodding up here. It's, a, it's, it's just going to get worse. But they uh, are. Yeah. Just, disgusting. It disgusts me. We have to stop. It. Well, that was a lot what the strength was for, for, for that, but I, I mean, I'm still worried with the art side of things that it's just going to, it's just going to keep going. I keep seeing things where they're, they're generating, they're literally generating actors. I mean, you may not all be aware of this, but the three of us are not up here right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's how good they're going. <laughs> Question. Yes. Early on, and um, 
it was he was such a different person then because I ended up doing a movie with him a few years later, which no one saw, I don't think. But it was called uh, Fair Game. Fair Game? No, that's not it. It was a different movie. <laughs> um, we were trying to. It was Chris Rock and Anthony Hopkins. Oh God. And it, and we were trying to stop terrorists from blowing up Manhattan, and it came out like September fourth. Oh. oh. So that's why no one saw that movie. But he was actually. They made me his love interest. I swear to God. You can actually see this movie and you'll be like, she's not gone. It's so cool that she called. I'm going on her IMDb later. I'm finding out what this is. I'm gonna watch this. I'll put it in my Instagram stories. <laughs> Questions? We only have a few minutes left with this panel. Yeah. Are either of you two still friends with Bruce Campbell? And if so, is he the same guy now that he was back when you first met? Would you still be friends with Bruce Campbell? <laughs> we actually are. <laughs> we do see him at conventions, and he is, um, that's who you see a lot is Bruce with his fans, but he's a very, um, he's a very, very funny person, and um, I would work with him tomorrow uh, if I could, and yeah, we see me, every, every once in a while we run into each other, or we realize that we're going to be at a convention together. Now that they've released him from prison, we together, <laughs> and he's very funny, he, he's very entertaining, and inclusive, you know, he, Kind of big deal, and we're, you know, we are too, but he, it's, it's like being in a high school being in a school. It's like Anthony Hopkins, you know, if your friends, you call him Tony. And we just call him, hey, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I say, did he help keep you guys warm? No. <laughs> he was afraid of us because we were women. They, they had never dated, like Sam and Bruce. Oh, they were like just out of high school. And we did like 19 or 20 takes of Bruce and I kissing, not because of bad acting or because of bad lighting. Sam, who was his best friend from high school, just wanted to torture him. I was so embarrassed and felt so, not that I was not that embarrassed, but I thought, we can do this, we can just kiss a couple times, you know? I mean, literally like 19 or 20 she takes. Loved kissing. I did love kissing. <laughs> but Bruce was tortured and Sam loved every second of it. Do you, do you still uh, talk with Sam? We just saw him this summer at one of these yeah. tech shows, Monster Palooza, and we had lunch. And, um, you know, we did, we did Oz with him, which was a lot of fun, too. It brought us in to be the three quadling, whatever, I don't know. But he, it's, yeah, we still have a relationship. And it's, you know, we don't see him very often, but it's very important. Well, that franchise definitely is. Uh, if you ask any horror fan, it's going to be in their in their top top five, top three. Some it's the top top. So we appreciate you guys for coming out and being that, and also we appreciate you. Uh, you ask anyone what their favorite horror movie is that won a Tony Award? Silence. That was kind of that was messed up. Do we have any other questions? Yes. To top off the cast, do you guys have any good stories about Richard Dominican? Yeah, we do. <laughs> <laughs> That'll cost you. That'll cost you. No, he's back on the trail. He's back on the trail. He is. Um, Rich was a professional diver. Did you know that? Like, like a high board swim diver. Like, he's really good at that. I'm not. I don't know if you knew that, but I'm not. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yo. Um, but yeah, he started to come back out on the road with us, and um, Rich was great too, and Rich will be very, he, he had a great time doing this movie. I don't know the exact story, but he was not actually supposed to be cast. His friend had auditioned for the role of Scotty, and I think at some point uh, his friend said, well, why don't you just audition to read for these guys as well, and they ended up hiring uh, Rich, so yeah. He's also a very big horror fan, unlike Betsy and me. So he knows every horror movie. He was so thrilled to be in this movie. We were like, oh my god, this movie is terrible. But he loved it. Any more questions? Well, I want to thank all three of you because we certainly appreciate that you 
you come to these conventions, the, the fans come to these conventions for you guys and for the vendors, of course. But all, I mean, everybody here is just super interested in what you have to say, and I really appreciate your time. Thank you so very much. Thank you. And I just want to say, we had dinner all together last night, a bunch of us, and you guys are the best. This is such a great convention. It's not, you know, humongous. It doesn't take over the state of Texas, but you guys make us feel so welcome, and we've had such a good time. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you guys for buying us drinks. Uh, a round of applause for Brooke Smith. We have all the time in the world. There was no rush, and uh, that was a wonderful experience. How long was that shoot about? Sorry, or that I, I was over three weeks. Three weeks. I was over three weeks. But uh, I think it went on forever. I mean, like I said, they had probably shot in 10 or 12 weeks. Uh, uh, how was Forrest? Is that correct? Well, Forrest was a higher jump. Meaning that he really, you know, was in on like one of the last auditions, and he just said, yeah, There was a moment where, you know, when, when, you, when, you're, when you're in that situation, you're, I'm not under any pressure because I know that I can my job, but I didn't know you see what was going on. And uh, so I thought, you're not doing anything wrong. Right? You're not just playing yourself in that sport. No, 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 you're not just doing anything. That's a wrap for Cult Classic. Day two, Bastrop, Texas, 2024. Pretty great cosplay. A lot of good actors, panels, and uh, show keeps getting bigger every year. It's uh, it's a lot of fun. I highly suggest you come check it out. Lots of cool stuff to see in Bastrop while you're here. You can kill two birds with one stone. See some Texas Chainsaw filming locations like the gas station, uh, the bridge from part two, the opening chicken scene. So yeah, Bastrop, Texas, every March. The gas station does also offer um, various celebrity signings throughout the year, so follow them on Instagram. If I have any more fun today, I don't think I'm going to be able to take it.